So with the recent release of Pro 4.1.0, there's been some added features and complexities to um, the things like dynamic conditions on elements. That's what we're gonna take a look at here. I actually needed this for a project I was working on for a client, and so today's launch made it super useful, and I thought I'd kind of share um, what this is and how it works. Um, so just so you know, sort of a baseline of where we're coming from with this, I've created this concert homepage and that's where we'll be editing. And then I've also just added the plugin uh, events calendar by a tribe. Um, so this is just your basic events calendar here. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this would work. I'm gonna go home in here and click edit with pro. And you'll see this is just a brand new, whoops, brand new page. We're gonna click start from scratch. And this is totally opinionated, but I'm just gonna come in here and create, we'll pretend this is like the header of our homepage. So I'm just gonna come in here and create a quick little style. Um, let's add something that makes it feel all concerty. So I've added an image in here, something like that. Maybe give it an overlay of black, a little transparent. We'll grab a headline element. And I'm just doing this this quick, but I want you guys to get a feel for, for what I really did for this client. Um, so, you know, let's something like this, something like that, something like that. And then pull some text in here to support it. There's our supporting text. Uh, we'll leave that, something like that. Okay, so there we have sort of our intro, but now let's say we wanted to have some sort of little like item up here when we have an upcoming concert that shows that that concert is upcoming, just like a little notification. You see this on a lot of uh, like tech websites, so maybe the concerts aren't the best example. Um, so let's go ahead and do this. So first thing we're gonna do is add a div to this column, and that's gonna contain our um, our button that we're gonna add in here in a second, but we're also, and let's I'm gonna pull this up so you guys can see it there. Um, so we're also gonna make this dev, div, excuse me, we're gonna make this div our provider, and it is gonna pull through our, not posts, but events. And so we want it to pull through the events, we want them in uh, descending order so that it's always the most uh, current one um, next. And then well, let's add a button here and this button is going to be our consumer of one. So we want it to pull through just the next event in here. So now what we're gonna do is come over here and in the text field here, and in the primary text, we want this to say next show. And what is the name of that show? Well, this would be our uh, post title, so we'll come under post and title. So there's our next show pulling through from uh, the events calendar. And then maybe we want something like the dates beneath it. And so we'd come in here, we would search for our post meta, and we want this custom field. And so we're gonna go into the custom field, click that little cog, that's how I got here. So clicking the cog takes us here where we can select the meta, and then we wanna get the start date. Now this is a little tricky because when you first add this in here, let's click the plus sign and look how this looks. It's kind of wonky, but you can format this, and I found this on the forums for uh, Themeco. We can format this and basically tell it, that's a, it that it's a date by simply coming in here and after start date, adding type equals, and then don't forget your quotes, date. And once we do that, you'll see that it changed there. So now let's go ahead and style this a little bit, make it kind of look like an alert maybe. Um, you know, maybe we want it to be, uh, again, this might not be the best way to do this, but let's go ahead and do, yeah, I don't like that. Let's go ahead and just something like that and start, there we go. Now this you know, may not be the best uh, example or style, but let's just kind of pull through something like this and add in a calendar, and there we have it. Now we also wanna make sure clicking this takes us out to that event, so we wanna come up here to our link and make sure that this dynamic field being pulled through is our post permalink, so this guy right here. Now, when we go ahead and save this, 
Let's go ahead and look at this on the front end. So this is kind of a little lesson in loopers and consumers. This here is now gonna take us to our Woodstock February 2nd event, okay? Um, so that's awesome. And as once this event passes and there's another event there, um, that event will automatically show up. Now this particular client that I was building this for um, wasn't sure that they'd always have upcoming events, especially with everything going on in the world. And so they didn't want this button to just show up blank when there wasn't an event. And I didn't wanna leave the responsibility on them to like show and hide this button. So we're gonna come over here and take a look at uh, this button. We're gonna go ahead and inspect it. We're gonna click customize and we're gonna come over to the element conditions. Now, one thing you'll notice is when you add an element condition, it'll automatically react to that condition being set. So right now post type is nothing and so it's not showing up. You can come up here and click this button and ignore element conditions so that you can see what you're working on. Um, but I'm actually gonna leave element conditions on here so that we can see how this is working in real time. So let's come back into our conditions here and we're gonna say post type is event because that's what our button is pulling through, our dynamic content. And now here's where we get to use our new expressions. These are new in 4.1.0. We're actually gonna say uh, date of this event is after and then we want uh, this to be um, the, what do we want this to be? Current date. So under global date time. Okay, but now you'll notice we selected date time, right? But now we need to actually add in a field here. And so this is where uh, we wanna pull through our event start date. So we're gonna come in here, we're gonna go right back to that meta and we're gonna click the gear, it takes us to our custom field. We wanna find specifically for this one, I'm using tribe events, so this is what it looks like. Uh, we want the event start date. So what this is saying now is if the post type is event and the event start date is after, and let's make sure this is here, current date, there we go, then show the event. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like on the front end. Okay, so this is February 2nd, today's date is January 25th, so that is perfect, that's showing up. But now, if we come over here, um, and let's jump into our back end real quick. and ignore my admin dashboard. I've mentioned this in a previous video. We'll talk about that at a later date. Um, but if we come into this admin dashboard and we change the event from February 2nd to today's the 25th, so let's make the event uh, the 24th. Um, so let's go February 24th, so it was yesterday. Now, when I come to this page, it just hides the button. It doesn't show a blank button. It doesn't show a broken button. It just hides the button altogether. And then when the client adds a new event in there, the button will just show up again, as long as that event happens sometime uh, after today's date. So anyway, lots of complexities that can be added uh, with these element conditions. This is one example, but it's a really cool example of being able to tie element conditions into other plugins and really come up with some cool logic. So anyway, hopefully this helps you guys. If you do have other questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks.